Hi, you guys. Welcome back to Catching Waves Yoga with me, Leslie. I'm so glad that you guys are here. And my guess is you probably found me because you either really like yoga or you're in pain. Uh, and I'm sorry if it's the latter of the two. Um, but this isn't the end of your journey, right? And you probably came here looking for advice because you've already seen some of my other videos that I have shown my own progress working through this condition. Um, and I've given lots of alternatives on how you can get through this um, with hopefully not needing a big surgery. Now, there are cases when you do need the surgery and I think that's okay. I think, you know, everyone's body is different and your doctors are gonna know what's best for you. So let me first start this by saying I am not a doctor. I am not giving you any medical advice. I am just simply sharing things that have worked for me over the years um, from the research that I have put in. And I have put in a lot of research, you guys, um, on just everything, COS, the body, the fascial system, the neurological system, the skeletal system. There's just so much. Um, and then also being a yoga instructor, it's, it all kind of goes hand in hand. Um, so I hope what I can provide for you is really beneficial. Um, but I just wanted to talk about a few specific things. And if I'm looking over here, it's because I do have my notes. Um, just about a couple of reminders for you guys. The first thing that I want to talk about um, comes from kind of where TOS comes from. Now, it is different for everyone. Sometimes there is like a car accident or some type of a traumatic injury to your body. Um, but sometimes it's just years and years of habitual patterns, things that you are just not aware of that over time your body literally, literally molds to that way. Um, and the first one that I'd really like to highlight is your posture. And I'm sure you guys have heard this if you've done any research at, on your own, posture comes up over and over and over again. And there's so much to it because if you're like, you know, slumped and your head is forward, look at this, like this looks uncomfortable. But this is how people are a lot of the time. Instead of sitting up nice and tall, you know, rolling onto your sit bones instead of allowing your low back to kind of sway out. Um, it's just simple things like that that we don't really think about day to day. And you've probably been doing the exact same way, sitting in a chair the exact same way, moving around the world the exact same way for your whole life. Maybe that's years, maybe it's 30, maybe it's more. I'm 33. So what I always say to myself is it took 30 years of things, trauma and patterns to put my body in a TOS, you know, kind of symptomatic um, situation. And here we are three years later, and I have really rechanged a lot of that reprogrammed my body. And so I always just think I'm working against 30 years right? So it takes a long time. It's not going to be something that changes overnight. Um, so again, when it comes to your posture, are you slouching? Is your head coming forward all the time? Find ways. You can literally bring it back. I just had a self-adjustment right there, which is kind of nice. Um, so find ways that you can bring that chin back in space, lift your shoulders up. Now, when I first started learning all this and I started making these habitual changes, I remember thinking like, I'm walking my dog and I'm like this. <laughs> And I was like, everyone's looking at me like I'm a crazy person because it felt like I was like a football player wearing these pads and like my shoulders were just way up. And realistically, it wasn't. It was just lifting them an inch or so to relieve some of that compression, which then helps reduce the numbness, the tingliness that you might get into your hands. And that's not going to be an immediate thing. You're not necessarily going to feel it the first time you lift your shoulders. And honestly, it's very tiring <laughs> because your muscles are not used to carrying your body in a very specific way. They're just relaxed. They're stretched out. And you have to, over time, build those muscles back up to support your body in the proper way. Um, so notice how you're sitting. Notice how you're sitting in a chair, right? Are you in the chair? Are you leaning to one side with your arm over here on like a little stool? You know, do you have your hands up? Um, those all impact your hips. They impact your spine. They impact everything, right? Um, so for a long time, what I did, and this might not be accessible for a lot of you, but it's a great place to start, even if you just kind of have to push through it, I would sit on the floor. I just, I stopped sitting on my furniture for about a year, uh, which I know sounds crazy. And even in my classroom, I am a school teacher. Um, I would stand and I'm, I always stand. There's too many people I gotta, I gotta talk to in class, but I'm just running around. But in my house, I took all my meals. I have a little table in our dining room or our living room. I would just go sit on the floor, make sure I'm sitting on a pillow. So my spine is nice and tall, you know, and the more that you sit on the floor, the more your body is naturally going to move because if you feel a little uncomfortable, maybe you move your legs to another side. And what that is doing is you're literally moving your body and you're lubricating your joints. Isn't that crazy? 
more you move, the more you lubricate your joints. The less you move, the more stuck you become. Literally, isn't that crazy? Um, so posture is huge. So start by, make sure we're sitting up tall, lift your shoulders just slightly, tuck your chin back in space and find times to just sit on the floor. And I'm not saying you have to do what I did and only sit on the floor for a year, but maybe you will. Um, and I think that's somewhere to start. It's a really good thing to look at and just notice uh, how you're carrying yourself. And it, the more you do it, the more you start to change your posture, you almost improve your mental health at the same time because you're not in this like depressed state and you start to open your body up, you start to lift your head and your shoulders and you start to feel a little more powerful in that too. And it builds your confidence just from changing your posture. Um, there, if you want to look up, you know, like, I think it's like power poses. There's a lot of research behind that and how it actually changes the brain. Um, so I think that's really interesting. Uh, find breaks in your day to move. <laughs> because again, whether you're sitting at a desk at work or you are even standing in one spot the whole day or sitting on your couch for too long, you need to move your body. Because again, like I just said, it lubricates your joints. It helps you feel better. It gets the blood flow going. And these are all super important for your entire system. So find parts in your day, just take a break, go for a quick little walk. Even if you're just walking around your living room or your kitchen or wherever you might be. Um, again, in my school, I will find a time where I will literally run laps in my classroom or I will leave my room and I'll just specifically go walk the hallways. I'll go upstairs and do a whole lap around the school and come back and you feel better because you get that blood flow going. You have a little bit more energy because you changed the place that you were at within the environment. Um, and it's just, it's so good for you for so many ways. So find moments in your day that you can just break and change what you are doing. Um, so yeah, um, I'm looking at my phone over here just to make sure I'm you know, on track with all my notes on things that I can suggest for you guys. Um, and I'm not going to keep this, I'm not going to make this video so long that you have to, you know, stop and pause a million times like I can usually do. Um, so posture, movement, and melt method. You guys probably figured that was coming. Um, the melt method is huge for everything that I had just said. It allows you to move. It is helping lubricate those joints through the specific movements. It is helping move the fluid in your fascial system all through your body instead of it being stuck. Um, it's helping work your lymphatic system, lymphatic drainage. It's also helping, you know, reduce any uh, excess fluid in the muscles so you don't have that soreness. There is just so many amazing things that the Melt Method offers as a byproduct of doing the process that it is just worth it. And I, I do not work for them. I am not affiliated with Melt Method at all, but it is something that has truly taken me from having almost no life and things that I couldn't do to doing my life. And it's one of those like non-negotiable things every single day. I find a way to use melt method. If it's just simple rebalance sequence or doing like a hand and arm rolling with the balls. Um, there's not, there's like hand and foot balls that you can use. There's the foam roller. Those are the things that I have. I have a big foam roller and then the hand and foot ball treatments. Um, those are really amazing. And I will just find throughout the day, whether it's in the morning or at night, I will just find one area to work on because doing something is better than doing absolutely nothing. And the great thing with the protocols is it's literally like you can do some of the things in 10 minutes or less. Some of them are literally in like five minutes. I might only have five minutes in the morning to work on my arms. And sometimes that is enough because the fascial system is so connected through your entire body that even if you do one tiny thing, you'll have systemic uh, uh, release for the rest of the body, which is really nice. So you might work your arms, but your neck feels more relaxed. And I think that's the coolest thing about this program. It's kind of like foam rolling, but the right way. <laughs> so that's, that's the only way I really know how to describe it is really truly foam rolling the right way. And you're not using a hard roller at all. You're not trying to beat up your body. You're trying to be gentle with it because the fascial system, the muscles, the lymphatic system, they're all so, um, they're, you know, they're delicate, especially the fascial system. It's literally right underneath of your like first few layers of your skin. Um, so it's just nice when you can find something that you can use that I know that works. <laughs> Not that you guys know me, but I um, really only preach about things that I absolutely love and have used. And I have been using it now for probably close to three years. And here we are. I have like no TOS symptoms at all anymore. And it's amazing. 
Um, so yeah, those are just a few of the insights that I wanted to give you today. I will throw a bunch of links down in the description for you with some other resources that I think might be beneficial. But when I talk to people, typically posture and the way we are in our day, those are like the biggest issues. Um, but before I leave you, I do want to give you one more tip and especially my ladies, maybe men too. Don't put things on your shoulders. Don't carry a backpack. Don't carry a purse. Don't carry a, you know, a crossbody, whatever. Um, those are all pressing that weight down. And again, you're not allowing yourself to really lift those shoulders and hold them in place. So one thing that I have implemented and I started this several years back just because I, I couldn't put my purse even with hardly anything in it without my arm going completely numb. Um, so what I got was a little rolling cart and I use it all the time. And I've noticed some of my coworkers now have rolling carts too. And they're like, and my back doesn't hurt, right? So there's so many benefits from just taking the weight off of your shoulders. And if you do, for some reason, need to carry weight on your shoulders, get a hiking backpack that has the straps both here on your chest and around your right waist. Those things are absolutely amazing, especially when you wear them the right way, when everything is tight and in its place, because then it is using, you know, your hips and your more of your like kind of underneath your collarbone as the way to lift it versus it all just setting and pulling down onto your shoulders. So again, a hiking bag, I really like Osprey bags, but I'm sure there's other ones that you guys can use. So that's what I'm going to leave you with today. Uh, if you guys have any questions um, or any way that I might be able to help you, just let me know. Um, you know, these videos, sometimes I feel like it's kind of silly for me to make them, but then I recall when I was going through this, I had no one. I had, well, one person, I'm Gareth, um, and I'll link his YouTube for you too. But it's so hard when you have something so rare to feel alone and that you have no answers. And so I keep making these because I, I really, truly hope that they are helping you guys. Um, if anything, giving you a little inspiration. So yes, I'm going to stop my rambling now and I will leave you with that. I hope you guys are getting healthier every single day and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye.